So in this video, I want to talk about volume 4.5 of, of course, Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian. And yes, you did hear that right, volume 4.5. So this is kind of like an in-between volume. I'm not going to go over the exact sort of order of things because it can be a little bit confusing. Well, I say that, but basically... Volume 4 and Volume 4.5 kind of sync, like, they, they go in different orders. And so, yeah. So, for example, would be uh, Volume 4 Prologue, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2 come before Volume 4.5, Chapter 1 and Chapter 2. And then it goes Volume 4, Chapter 3, then Volume 4.5, Chapters 3 through 10. And you kind of get the gist. It, it, they have a different order based on the events that play out. So... I could do a bit of a write-up on it, but either way, what I did was I just read through Volume 4, and then just read through Volume 4.5, and I just knew as I was reading them where it synced up in the timeline because of those things, so it's pretty straightforward. I really like this volume. There are some chapters in here where I was kind of like, eh, they're all, they're, they're all fun. It's just some of them I was like, you know, they're good, but they're not as good as some of the others. There's definitely some where I'm just like, okay, this is pretty wild, and some of them are kind of like, eh, this is fun. The one that really starts off is, of course, the chick that had the debate with Alia. So the one that kind of called them out was like, oh yeah, let's have that debate, and that's in volume two. I'm having a memory fart here, but it's like volume two. And Basically, she ends up finding out that Yuki and Masa are blood-related, which is hilarious when you really think about it, because she finds out that they're blood-related, and even though she shipped them before they were blood-related, she still ships them when they are blood-related. That, that's what's really hilarious about it. Like, she's really into shipping. And it kind of is a good representation of anime and light novel and manga fans, is that shipping can get pretty serious. But she's definitely a bit of a weeb. Nowhere near as bad as Yuki, but she definitely has her own fetishes. And like I said there, she ships them. Even though they're blood related and she kind of has that like forbidden love kind of thing going on River, Which just makes it even more funny because Yuki gets so much like flack for being so trollish in nature. Like she's not serious about hooking up with her brother. She just kind of jokes about the whole tropes in mangas, light novels and animes. But this chick is like literally shipping them together. She's like, I, I don't even care, you're blood related. Like get together, like you're perfect for each other, which is just funny. So they do have a bit of a weeb off. They end up having a bit of a discussion about things and I think it's just a fun chapter because it doesn't try to take itself too serious. It's just a fun conversation between two individuals that are trying to test each other on who's more crazier than the other or who's more in, more of an otaku or into fetishes, etc, etc. Which I just thought was really great. Then you go into chapter 2, which is, I think chapter 2, which is to do with... Uh, the nano chick, which is also the running mate for, or the partner for that chick as well, and how she has, like, these, like, she controls these kids in the class. I, I referred to them in my notes as simps, and she was paying back Masa for the favour and everything, and kind of, like, turned on one of them. It was just interesting how she controls things, and how she manipulates things, and also just some of her family relationships. I feel like there's a lot more to her than meets the eye. And I'm expecting to find out much more as the volumes go on with her. Because there's just a couple of different more layers to her. It's the blonde hair chick. But I, I do find her interesting. It's just we don't really know much about her yet. It's like the maid. We don't not know much about her yet. We're learning more as the volumes go on. Then there's another chapter with food tolerance where Ali is trying to build up a tolerance of spicy foods so that she can kind of like have a bit of a connection with Alia. She ends up making a friend with someone because of that. It's just a fun little chapter. Like I said, there are some chapters where it's like, it isn't groundbreaking, but they're just fun. The first one I thought was just groundbreaking because it was just like, oh my god, this chick is just like absolutely wonkos when it comes to her shipping. 
then you've got the next one after that and this is this is where it, like yuki is just hilarious and why i find it so funny that so many people take her jokes so serious yuki is having a discussion with her dad and Mus is there and they're talking about like oh you know he's like doing this job negotiate like diplomacy and all that other kind of stuff and oh he's made a friend with some chick and oh but you know that chick also has a daughter and blah 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 and then yuki's just like oh we could get like a stepsister relationship kind of love interest going on with him and i'm just like why are you trying to hook him up with people like it's just so funny that yuki is just she loves any type of tropes that's what i mean she doesn't even care if who it is. she just is trying to hook him up with people and i just think it's so so funny but it also refers back to another point she keeps referring to her brother as spineless because she keeps saying hey why aren't you getting it on with alia which leads into another chapter about the storeroom and how they had to go through a bunch of tasks to try and like discover all these like wonders in the school and different haunted things and like the cat and the the girl that's like apparently bleedy or her engine there's like like ghosts and all that kind of stuff and one of them just leads into a situation where they're going to look for a cat in the storeroom and they get locked in it because yuki sets up a trap and puts a camera in there and it's really hot in there and it's just like the way she just sends a message to her brother and just going oh yeah by the way just because you're so spineless i'm basically trying to force you and alia to get together and do it and it's just like my god this girl is just diabolical on a whole different level like she is the master villain of it all but she's like you're actually on her side with these things because it's just so funny what she's trying to do and how she's trying to like get alia and masa to kind of like get closer together and it also notes on that later on in the volume as well like she outright says to herself that she just wants master to be happy like she wants him to get with someone and find love it's again the whole like sister thing is just a funny trope to her that she likes to play off as a joke and i know i kind of harping on a little bit about it but it's just still funny when you look at the fact that she is just making a joke about something and yet so many as people like to refer to them as tourists see this and they go oh it's got incest in it it's like it's not though it's it's literally just her making a joke because her main objective is to actually find or help get Musa to find love so that he can be happy and it also delves into a lot of that kind of stuff of like there's clearly some like issues going on and it does delve into that a little bit in this volume where it discusses about or a little bit in his own mind that i think he kind of feels like he can't get close to someone and very much it's at the end of the volume where he's talking to alia about his feelings and everything and he obviously can see that she's in love with him she denies it again i knew it was going to happen i was like my god i swear to god if this girl plays it off as oh i was just doing it as a reward it's not like i like you or anything baka i'm just like, i swear to god woman i will go through that volume i will i will pull my spiritual form into that volume and slap you woman like my god she is frustrated i knew she was gonna do it knew she was gonna do it and she did it does the whole it's not like i like you anything so she's denying it again but he knows he he's clearly can tell that she has feelings for him but he is not ready to confess yet and at least in this volume it explains why he's not confessing because you can clearly tell he has feelings for her but he's confused and a lot of that has to do with his past trauma which i guessed again got it spot on that there's clearly some past trauma that he has to resolve between his father his mother and just some of the family issues and i do think the grandfather one of them is one of the leading issues to that i think it's a big family sort of conflicting tug of war going on and i think the sister is one that's tried to keep things together tried to be there for her mother but masa has got a lot of pent-up issues that he has to go through and that's why yuki is trying to help find love for him or help push him towards that because she can see that he's suffering and he's lonely and there's a lot of pent-up issues inside of him which is why i thought this volume was very good because it adds a lot of context it adds a lot of layers and flavor to 
what is going on in the story and I think it's just it's very well done I also have been trying to cook up a really good title for the video and I think I was going to title it as I love you Yuki just because in this volume she hypnotizes him and he ends up saying I love you Yuki so I was like oh, I need to come up with a really clever witty title for the video because yeah there's a whole chapter where she does the hypnotism stuff and it leads into this big prank and this big like crazy situation where he starts acting like this big hot stud and everything and he's basically about to take two chicks to his bedroom and bang them which is the maid and alia and i'm just like <laughs> i'm like i so just want a harem ending at this point <laughs> i just really want him to get rid of like both sisters and the maid i'm just like why not why not it, it would be funny just to see kind of play out but there's a lot of little fun things there's like the sisters going shopping and as i like to call it a boob off because they're both trying to like show off and be like oh i got a better swimsuit and also just the fact that alia is so innocent but also so naive as well and then you've got like the park and the waiting which is an interesting little bit of context there where she constantly goes to the park waiting for him and that's what she's kind of waiting on like She's waiting for him to finally realize who she is. Like, she knows, and she's waiting for it. So, all the pieces of the puzzle are coming together, and I don't think we'll find out any actual more. Well, clearly, we won't find out more until Volume 5, but it was just one of those I thought, maybe we might find out something about it in 4.5, but I figured it, it would be little hints at little things that were missing so i thought that was really cool then you had the cook-off which again as i fall back to is that there are some chapters that are cool but they're not like in a ranking these are kind of like the ones that are like the weakest which isn't bad again i'm not hating i'm just saying there are good there are the chapters that you're like oh this is a high ranking one and these ones are just like eh, they're fun but not as crazy as some of the others then you've got the girl talk which is alia yet again obsessing over him and even yuki just being like my god girl you are obsessed with my brother just get together already which is more funny because yuki kind of baits her and toys with her a little bit and then imagines like weird things with her sister <laughs> that girl has got a wild imagination and that's the chapter where she basically says yeah i want to get you two together which just proves my point don't take her serious and then of course you've got the final part which is the playing off the kiss which is why i sigh in that because i'm just like my god girl i wish you weren't so frustrating and then her, her sister his sister kind of pretending to sleep on the shoulder because they're basically all coming home from that event that they went out for the beach and everything and so they're kind of like all tired him and alia are having a bit of a discussion and it's just it it's such a good volume it adds a lot of little things one thing to also note about the hypnotizing stuff is <laughs> what what I find interesting about the hypnotizing is that she's taken a video of it all and now she's spread it around and Alia keeps a copy of it. Let's just be real. I, I think she keeps it as one of those little things where she's just like looks at it every now and again. So those are the parts that I've kind of explained the basics of the volume itself. I feel like I'm just explaining it and not really getting into what I liked about it so much, even though I have. I I think it's a very good volume in adding additional context, adding additional layers to what some of these events are going to play out. A little bit more context to his feelings about his family issues, Yuki's overall objectives and what she's trying to do, and just her more mis 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 mischievousness. you got Alia playing Denial, which I think is going to be a consistent issue until she finally confesses. But I think really what it comes down to is that she's going to keep denying it until he makes up his mind. And that's the thing. This volume really goes into detail on a little bit more detail or a lot. It depends on your perspective of why he hasn't made a major for forward sort of aggressive move of being like, yes, I'm in love with you. He has insecurities, he has issues going on, and I don't think he's going to do anything until those issues are resolved. And that's really the end game. That's what I always saw as it. Is that there's clearly some issues that he has to deal with mentally before he can finally allow himself to fall in love. And once that's done, then I think he will confess to her, and I honestly think he'll confess in Russian. 
I think he'll just be outright, just like speaking full Russian to her, and she'll just be like, "Excuse me, sir, you speak Russian? Uh, when did that happen?" So that's how I see it, as far as an analytical component goes, is that there is issues that he has to deal with. I don't really think Alia is ever really going to make any forward motions on the sense of being like confessing and saying, let's get together. I just don't see that being the case. I think she'll keep teasing it. I think she'll keep playing back and forth, which is clearly what she's been doing for these last couple of volumes, like making a forward push, backing off and saying, oh, it was just a reward. Oh, it was just this. Oh, it was just that. It's not like I like you or anything, bucker. So... I think that's going to be the consistency, which would frustrate some people, but I think it's also understandable that she's very stubborn, and she doesn't want to admit, and she's very competitive, and that's another thing that also goes into this volume that Yuki was kind of pushing out of her during the night talk part of the chapter, is that she's like talking to Alia about what kind of guy you like, and she's like, oh, well, I want someone that's very driven, and all these kind of things, and it was just like, even Yuki's just like, so you just basically just want to date yourself. But with a male body. So it's like, sure, that that's her brother, Yuki's brother. But it's like at the same time, she even points this out to Alia, is that it's like you're very competitive. So you wouldn't really you wouldn't be able to date them. You would be too busy trying to compete with them because you're so competitive in nature. So if you want someone extremely driven, then you're just going to overly compete. And then she kind of goes, yeah, I guess I'd like someone a little bit silly and that can have fun and all the rest. And it's like, okay, so you literally just want Masa. It's like, you're just outright saying it. I, I want a boyfriend like Masa, who's driven, but also can be a little bit laid back and kind and silly and just easygoing, like all those kind of components. So that way, the competitive nature isn't in overdrive. Like, she can be somewhat competitive, but not too competitive where it really holds back the relationship. Because I do think that's an that would be an issue if Masa was just as compete well as driven as her in all aspects and wasn't as laid back i think it would actually make it worse I, I don't think she would be able to ever be able to date them properly and this is the thing as us as humans a lot of the times what we want in in our minds is like oh this is what i want in a relationship is not really what we truly desire because a lot of the times we have all these ideals in our mind of what we want a perfect relationship to be, but on, in practice, it doesn't work out. Because a lot of the times we don't account for certain other equations when it comes to the other person and how we would respond. Because a lot of times we're like, oh yeah, I want that out of a person. But then when you see someone like that, you respond very differently. And that's the thing with Alia. I think in her mind, she's like, yeah, I want someone really driven like me. But it's like, yeah, no, you don't want to date yourself. And I know that sounds weird, but I think most people would understand where I'm coming from there. Where it's like, she's kind of wanting to date herself, but just in a male body. It's not like she's in love with herself, because that's kind of what it makes it sound like. I don't think she's in love with herself. I don't think she's that narcissistic. But I think she just wants someone that's kind of like a mirror image of her drive and focus and competitive nature. But that's the problem. I don't really think she quite wants that to the same level as what she is. I think she just wants someone that is somewhat driven, but also has that laid back nature, that silly nature that can bring out the more laid back nature in herself. And so that it can kind of balance each other out. So that she can draw out some of the competitiveness in him. But he can also draw out some of the laid back nature. And the more keeping her calm and grounded. Because like I said. If he was as driven as her. All they would do is be competing. So all she would see is a rival. Rather than a romantic partner. Which is exactly what Yuki points out. Which is why I'm glad Yuki of all people is very aware of that. Because it's just like Yuki's smart. She clearly can see that Alia has feelings. Masa can clearly see that Alia has feelings. But Alia, I think, sometimes doesn't want to admit, clearly. But also, I think she's not quite sure at what she's trying to get out of a relationship. And I think she's also got this stubborn mindset of, it's almost like, I wouldn't say really like a religion, but it's like these values where she thinks that 
she needs to do certain things before she's allowed to be in any form of relationship. It's not like marriage first before anything, but I think she's kind of like, oh, well, I have to do all these certain things before I'm allowed to fall in love. So I think there's some of that also. And I think as time goes on, she'll be able to kind of relax a little bit. And I think Mas is going to help her not be so rough, like polish her up a little bit, like remove some of those jagged edges that are making it hard for her to connect with other people and it will allow her to make more friends as well which will help her and her overall goals of going as far as again the, the student council and everything so i think they both complement it quite well it's kind of as i think the thing goes the yin and yang really love the volume i love that context i know i kind of repeat myself there but I do think it's important to note on that because each chapter, to some degree, adds a little bit more flavor to each of the characters, gives you a better understanding of how they think and feel. And there are definitely, like I said, there are some volumes that really stand above the rest because they are just very pivotal in adding those extra layers, specifically the main characters. But I really want to see more of Nana. I think that's how you pronounce it. Basically, as I like to call it, the master of controlling people and her little simp army because I still feel there's going to be some interesting aspects to her. And I do feel like even though the end game is Alia and Masa getting together, I do feel like there's going to be some speed bumps of other girls that might show some interest in him, which I hope the story doesn't go too much. I, I mean, I don't mind if like the maid has a little crush here and there and those kinds of things but i don't want it to turn into like a full blind harem where it's like five girls that are all in love with him and the story is like having an identity crisis where it's trying to pretend that they all have a chance but none of them actually really do except alia i don't mind those types of series from time to time but i do kind of get annoyed when they're overly done i don't think the light novels is going to do that but again it's worth noting that i hope it never does it i don't think it will but we'll see where things go. So again, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below. What do you think of volumes 4.5 of Alia sometimes hides her feelings in Russian? Also, as I like to call it, Yuki does not hide her feelings in Japanese. So again, if you like this video, hit the like, subscribe, and I'll see you beautiful nerds in the next video.